India has developed its first indigenously designed 700 megawatts pressurized heavy water nuclear reactors in Gujarat. Hello and welcome to Drishti IAS. My name is Saloni Nankhulier and in this video we will understand the significance of this achievement and also look at India's nuclear regulatory framework. So we are talking about two nuclear reactor units, unit 3 and unit 4 which are present at the Kakra Park. Atomic power station which is in Gujarat and these two nuclear units they are 100% indigenously developed they are pressurized heavy water reactors and they were commissioned in 2023 and 2024 respectively but now they have been granted a five year operational license and that is the reason that they are in news and before understanding the significance of this achievement let us start with the basics of nuclear energy. So, we already know that nuclear energy generates electricity by making use of fissile elements and they are of two types, fission and fusion. Under fission, one heavy nucleus breaks down into two or more lighter nuclei, for example, U-235 or plutonium 239 and this takes place in our atomic power stations versus fusion where two or more lighter nuclei they combine to form a heavier nuclei and this type of reaction takes place in our stars for example the sun. So a lot of heat is generated by both these reactions and that heat is used to convert water into steam that steam runs the turbine which in turn generates electricity. And one of the most important characteristics of nuclear energy is that it is one of the cleanest forms of energy because of the negligible greenhouse gas emission that this has. So this is the reason that India keeps on investing in the nuclear energy programs and it also wishes to be self-reliant in this thing so that we do not rely a lot on foreign investments or foreign technology for constructing our nuclear reactors. So the importance of these nuclear reactors is threefold. First, as I already discussed that they are 100% indigenous which means that they have been designed completely designed developed constructed completely in India no foreign help was taken and this is a step towards our self-reliance in nuclear energy programs and Atma Nirbharta in the nuclear energy programs so this is one importance second importance is the huge capacity of 700 megawatts so this is the first time India has been able to achieve this kind of a capacity in its nuclear reactors. Before this it was only 240 or 540 but it was never 700. So this is the second major achievement. And the third is making use of pressurized heavy water nuclear reactors. And what is so special about pressurized heavy water reactors is that they use original uranium instead of enriched uranium. So they make use of natural uranium only and natural uranium consists very low quantities of U-235, approximately 0.7% of U-235 only and by the process of enrichment we increase this U-235 in our natural uranium. But because enrichment is happening definitely the cost is also going to increase versus in pressurized heavy water reactors they are very cost efficient because they make use of natural uranium only and not the enriched uranium. So this is the significance of the milestone that India has achieved that they, we have been able to develop something that's indigenous, something that is of high capacity and something that is making use of natural uranium only. So it is cost effective. And the operational license has been provided to NPCIL or Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited and this is a five-year operational license. NPCIL is developing 10 more such nuclear reactors in something that is known as fleet mode of expansion. So fleet mode of expansion means constructing nuclear reactors almost simultaneously or at the same time. And by doing this, we are ensuring a faster delivery, faster approval, better execution, faster construction of these nuclear reactors because right now we'll only require one common blueprint which is going to be applicable for all our nuclear reactors. So only one blueprint needs to be approved, only one type of construction needs to happen. So all this is going to help us with faster construction and faster execution of our nuclear reactors. And this is also going to standardize and make our process more cost efficient. Now which body granted them this license? 
So this body was the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, which is India's independent nuclear regulator set up under the Atomic Energy Act of 1962. And as already discussed that this is a five-year operating license that was given to them. And there was a series of rigorous tests that were performed, rigorous reviews that were performed on these nuclear reactors. And approximately 15 years went in this review process. This takes us to the regulatory framework, nuclear safety and regulatory framework that we follow in India. Why do you think we took 15 years to review something? Because India follows a multi-layered and multi-tier safety protocol to ensure safety at every level. So this involved independent reviews, peer evaluations from other members of the scientific committee also and post-commissioning checks also. So the work did not stop once the reactors were commissioned. Post-commissioning also a lot of rigorous safety protocols were followed. Safety reviews happened to ensure that everything is functioning properly because we have to be mindful of the hazards, the safety hazards that can come in if the nuclear energy is not handled appropriately. So this is the regulatory framework that India follows and these nuclear reactors are now a push to India's nuclear energy. Because nuclear is a low carbon energy, it is one of the cleanest fuels, it has very low GHG emission. So India always focuses on becoming Atmanirbhar, on self-reliant in nuclear energy. In fact, India has a net zero goal of 2070. And when did India adopt this? So this happened at COP26, that happened at Glasgow. So India has a net zero emission target by 2070 and for this we are relying on clean energy sources, renewable energy sources also and nuclear energy is one of the cleanest forms of energy available. And this also helps India to scale clean energy using domestic uranium resources, paving a way for eventual thorium-based reactors. So we need to understand that India has both uranium reserves and thorium reserves, but very minimal uranium reserves, that is only 1-2% to 2 of world's total uranium reserve, but abundant thorium reserves, which is approximately 25% of the world's total thorium reserve, especially in the monocyte sands of Kerala. So right now we are relying a lot on the limited uranium reserves that we have, but we need to transition to thorium based reserves now and this is one of the targets of India's three, three tier nuclear program that was given by Dr. Homi Bhabha. So India has a three tier nuclear energy program and we wish to transition from uranium reserves to thorium reserves because of the abundance of thorium reserves in India and commissioning and operationalizing these reactors is going to ensure that that happens in the near future. So this brings us to the end of our video and as a way forward for India, it's a very good step because it's a self-reliant and an Atmanirbhar step. We are now becoming indigenous in our technology also of nuclear reactors. So the way forward is that we need to invest in our thorium based research because of the abundance of this in India we need to invest in the thorium based research we need to increase public awareness and expedite our fleet deployment complete deployment of the nuclear reactors also so that we keep on constructing these nuclear reactors quickly and also keep deploying them and operationalizing them in a faster manner. So that was all for today's video. I hope you found the discussion helpful. Now let us look at a practice question for prelims. With reference to India's indigenous 700 megawatts nuclear reactors at Kakrapar Atomic Power Station, consider the following statements. 1. The reactors used enriched uranium as fuel and light water as moderator. 2. They are the first fully indigenously designed pressurized heavy water reactors of 700 megawatts capacity. Which of the statements is or are correct? 1 and 2 only, 1 only or 2 only? Please provide your answers in the comment section and I will pin down the correct one. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe. And do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.